As we go to our top story today, Fidel Castro has announced he's resigning as Cuban president, ending 49 years in power. In defiance of the United States, Castro has led the island since the Cuban Revolution succeeded in 1959. In a letter published in the Cuban newspaper Granma online, the 81-year-old Castro wrote, quote, it would betray my conscience to take up a responsibility that requires mobility and total devotion that I am not in a physical condition to offer. Castro temporarily handed over power to his brother Raul 19 months ago due to illness. He has not been seen in public since. In his letter to the Cuban people, Castro said he would remain involved in Cuban affairs. He wrote, quote, I am not saying goodbye to you. I only wish to fight as a soldier of ideas, he wrote. President Bush was traveling in Rwanda when the news of Castro's resignation broke early this morning. Bush told reporters, quote, the U.S. will help the people of Cuba realize the blessings of liberty. Peter Kornblow joins us now on the phone from Washington, D.C., senior analyst at the National Security Archive, where he directs the Cuba Documentation Project. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Peter. Did this announcement in the online edition of the Cuban newspaper, Grandma, come as a surprise to you? Uh, it only came as a surprise in that it was announced today, Tuesday, rather than on Sunday, this coming Sunday, when the National Assembly was due to meet, and everybody widely expected that uh, although there'd be some type of uh, vote uh, of support for Fidel, that he would at that point step aside and his brother would officially become president of Cuba and chief of the Cuban Communist Party. So Fidel has gone, have gone out on his own terms uh, at this point uh, and that making the announcement early and paving the way for, for the focus on Sunday to be on the future of Cuban leadership. Can you talk about the significance of uh, Castro officially stepping down, resigning as president of Cuba? Well, I, I think it's a, a momentous uh, occasion because rulers like Fidel Castro somewhat traditionally leave office uh, in a coffin or, uh, or during a military coup. Um, and here he has basically, I think, capped his legacy of, of, of revolutionary leadership by leaving under his own terms, by uh, helping to usher in a very smooth transition, almost seamless transition, to his brother and to younger disciples of, of both Castros, um, who will, I think, emerge on Sunday and in the days thereafter to, to lead Cuba. Um, so Castro has lived to not only see um, the institutionalization of his revolution, but the passage of power uh, peacefully um, to, uh, to uh, another gener generation. There has been a new book, an autobiography, actually, of Castro just published, um, called Fidel Castro, My Life, a spoken autobiography. It was written by Castro in conversation with Ignacio Ramonet. Yes, it's a very, very interesting book. Um, and in the, the book, which is um, described as a spoken autobiography, which is very appropriate for Fidel Castro, who, of course, is known for his loquaciousness and long speeches, um, but in this book, which is, uh, contains the extraordinary history of his life and his involvement in, in the Third World and his relations with the United States and the accomplishments of the Cuban Revolution, the last chapter is titled, After Fidel, What? Uh, and he describes, uh, very uh, similar to the letter that he wrote uh, that was published today in, in Granma, he describes the need to, to step aside, let another generation uh, take over, uh, that he would not want to uh, continue in office if he was incapacitated. He also issues a warning to his enemies that, um, that if he dies, his ideas might become more powerful than when he was uh, alive. Um, and, uh, of course, he's not dying now. He's simply uh, officially uh, changing uh, titles from commander-in-chief to commentator-in-chief, uh, where he's going to be a kind of columnist for the, the Cuban Co Communist Party newspaper and continue to, to, as he puts it, you know, be a soldier in the battle of ideas. So he's not uh, leaving the scene, but certainly, I think, officially now turning over the reins of power. Peter Kornblow, he's also still secretary of the Communist Party. He did not leave that. Is there significance in this? I believe that on, I believe that on Sunday he will be replaced uh, by his brother um, as uh, secretary of the Communist Party or by another younger 
uh, Cuban uh, Party member, uh, who obviously uh, it's not clear who that will be, but um, from every indication in his autobiography and what he's been saying uh, in, over the last six or seven weeks about um, making sure a new generation of leadership emerges, um, the, it is clear that the Communist Party has taken steps to 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 start to move younger younger leaders into position uh, very high up in the party for the future. Um, President Bush is in Rwanda today, part of his five uh, African country tour. Um, when he learned of uh, this announcement of the resignation of Fidel Castro, he said the U.S. will help the people of Cuba realize the blessings of liberty. Well, there's very little that the Bush administration can do that it hasn't already tried to do. It actually had a con what was billed as a comprehensive plan to prevent Fidel Castro from turning over the reins of power to his brother Raul, and that plan has clearly and objectively uh, failed. Um, there will be a tremendous opportunity for the next president of the United States to look at Cuba, see a change in leadership there, and say, after 50 years, it is time to change the perpetual antagonism and hostility in U.S. policy towards the Cuban Revolution. At that point, the Cuban Revolution will have turned 50, 50 years old at the end of this year, um, and U.S. policy uh, has failed in all of its objectives to roll back that revolution. And the next president, I think, pragmatically will have to look at the situation and say, we are more isolated in the world uh, because of our policy of trying to isolate Cuba than Cuba is. Uh, and it's time for us to, to change this policy, which, which has not worked and which is not in the U.S. interest. Peter Kornblu, what is the U.S. Commission for Assistance to a Free Cuba? Well, the United States under the Bush administration has allocated uh, $80 million to, um, to send to dissident groups not only in Cuba but around the world um, who are pushing to organize opposition to, uh, the, uh, to communism in Cuba. Um, obviously, the, the United States has adopted a, a diplomatic effort uh, with its allies uh, in Europe and elsewhere to try and curtail uh, economic ties to Cuba, but that has, has failed. George Bush gave a speech uh, last fall uh, in which he once again virtually begged his allies to join the United States. Uh, to support the, 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 what he sees as the march of freedom in Cuba, but by any objective standard, there is not an organized opposition uh, to uh, the Cuban Communist Party, um, and no real hope that in the near future, at least, there, there will be. Um, what I think will happen is that if, if the next president of the United States uh, steps back, adopts a dialogue and more normal relations with Cuba, the space in Cuba uh, for the kind of national security state side of the Cuban Revolution to, 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 to soften, uh, uh, I think, will, will, will grow broader. Um, and Raul Castro is committed to uh, some significant economic changes, which we'll be hearing more about in the weeks to come, um, which are also, uh, in the months to come, will, will I think, lead to, to, to more economic and social openings in Cuba. What do you mean? Well, he's going to be uh, certainly working on um, uh, changing the, the kind of Fidel's kind of hardline position on entrepreneurship, uh, on small, uh, small businesses, on, on, uh, on uh, farming and agricultural cooperatives um, and, and private, uh, private farming to increase uh, production of agriculture. Um, as Cubans become more independent economic actors, there certainly will be um, a push for them to, for, 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 for Cuban civil society to, to, to organize a, around economic units and, uh, and, um, and broaden the, the social movement towards more freedom of expression, more, more organization of, of the society. Is that going to happen anytime soon? No. 